We welcome you to the Lighthouse in Cherry Tree, Pennsylvania, with founders and pastors Ken and Wilda Brown. And now, let's go into the service already in progress. Quicken me according to thy spirit. Quicken me according to thy righteousness. Quicken me to salvation. And uh, that word quicken means to make me alive and fully alive in the spirit of God. And uh, I was looking again, and I'm going to read the first six verses in the, uh, put it in the Amplified if you can. Is somebody back there? Oh, Dorinda will be there. Okay. Uh, the first six, or first eight verses, uh, this is divided into eight verses, and then there's eight more verses. But I'm going to read these verses, and then I'm going to be reading, using some out of the book of, uh, out of the Passion Bible. So I want to read it in the, uh, put it in the King James first, please. King James, can you put it in that? I, I'm in Psalm 119. I told you before, I don't know where I'm at. Now she asked me, where are you? How many say, pastor's up here. <laughs> Psalm 119, verses 1 to 8. Uh, Blessed are the undefiled in the way. Everybody say, in the way. Blessed are those in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed. Blessed, that is happy to be envied, are they that keep his testimonies and seek him with the whole heart. Uh, blessed are those also who do no iniquity and walk in his ways. Uh, you have commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways, somebody say my ways, were directed to keep the statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto thy commandments. Uh, I will praise thee with the uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments, I will keep thy statutes, O Lord. I will not forsake them, no, uh, not utterly. Put it in the Amplified in the same eight verses in the Amplified Bible, please. Uh, Amplified Bible takes the King James and takes the definitions and expands it out. Uh, and so we're looking at the Amplified Bible. It said, blessed, happy. Somebody say, I'm happy. Blessed, happy, fortunate, uh, uh, to be envied are the undefiled, the upright, truly sincere and blameless. Uh, in the way, somebody say in the, in the way. In the way, that means in God's way of the revealed will of God who walk, order their conduct and conversation in the law of the Lord, the whole uh, God's revealed will. His way is his will. His will is his way. Go ahead, verse two, please. Blessed and happy and fortunate to be envied are they who keep his testimonies, uh, who seek, inquire for, and of him, and crave to him with the whole heart. Verse 3, yes, they do no unrighteousness, uh, no willful wandering from his precepts. They walk in his ways. Uh, you have commanded us to keep your precepts, that we should observe them diligently, Oh, that my ways, oh, that my ways. Everybody say, oh, that my way. Okay, we're directed and established to observe your ways or your statutes. Uh, hearing, receiving, loving, and obeying them. Verse 6. Then shall I not be put to shame by failing to inherit your promises when I have respect unto your commandments. I will praise and I will give thanks to you with uprightness of heart. When I learn by sanctified experiences your righteous judgments, your decision against and punishment for particular lines of thought and conduct. That's a long thing. Uh, verse 8, please. I will keep your ways, your statutes. Oh, forsake me not. Utterly forsake me not. I'm going to read it one more time. And uh, th this is out of the uh, Passion Bible, and I'm not reading the entire thing. Uh, but it's talking about the way of the Lord three times in that passage of Scripture. And the way is a synonym for God's divine will. Say, the way is God's divine will. And a metaphor for a course of life or a path of life. Uh, uh, we sing uh, Psalm 25. Uh, Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. And then we sing the second verse. Teach me thy way. Teach me thy way, the way of the Lord. And Psalm 119, verses 1 to 8, Blessed and happy are those who are walking in the light and the revelation of God's word. Everybody say, God's word. Say it out loud. God's word is very important. 
and I am to walk in the light of it, joy will overwhelm everyone who keeps his word. Joy will overwhelm you. When Pastor Wilder preached the last message, he was talking about the joy of the Lord. They will choose the right way. Somebody say, there is a right way and a left way. Leave the left way and go the right way. Put your net on the right side of the boat, you'll catch some fish. Put it on the left side, you'll get nothing. Got it? They will choose the right way to live. Their life will bring glory. Everybody say glory to the Lord God. Say glory. More glory. Strength will come by obedience and consecration. Knowledge will be gained by righteousness. Faithfulness will bring revelation of his will into our lives. And so as I was considering this and for about three days, the Lord kept talking to me about the way of God. And uh, I knew it was the Holy Spirit speaking and I didn't know where to go. And I, uh, when I went back to Psalm 119, read that, I saw three times in there it talks about the way of the Lord. And uh, so I put down and I began to study this and study it out. And I found out uh, by studying that, that there are three ways or three wills. There is the way of the Heavenly Father and he will direct us by his Holy Spirit. He said in John 14, he said, when I come to you, he said, I'm going to go back to my father, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless, uh, for I'm going to send unto you another comforter, and he will teach you, he will lead you, he will guide you, uh, he will take you, and one scripture says, uh, and one version says, uh, he will lead you in the right way. Everybody say the right way. So on the one side, we have the will or the way of the Father. The way of the Father is that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, there's healing. That's the will of the Father, okay? But then there's a second one, and I got to thinking about that, and that's the way of transgressors. And I looked in the scripture, and uh, it's talking about in the book of Jude, about those mockers and gawkers and uh, uh, going the way of Cain and uh, going the way of uh, uh, Balaam, going the way of idols, serving idols, and serving the things of the world, and that's the transgression. Surely he was wounded for our transgression. And so our transgressions are gone. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And so when I saw that, I saw that on one side we have God's will, and on the other side, uh, uh, over here we have wisdom, over here we have foolishness, okay? O over here we, we are directed by the Holy Spirit, and... Uh, over here, we're directed by the things of the world. And so when I'm looking in, and put this up here, please, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1 and 2, okay? In Ephesians 2, it says, uh, you, he made alive. Put it in the uh, King James, please. And you hath he quickened. Everybody say quickened. And that means made alive or uh, he quickened you, made you alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, verse 2, where in times past, everybody say in times past. In times past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the way of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Who is that? Satan. That is Satan. According to the power of the air, the spirit that works in the children of disobedience, verse 3. Two, three, please. Among whom also, this is the Apostle Paul, and he says, among also we had our conversation, and that means our manner of life uh, in times past, the lust of the flesh, uh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Uh, so I did that purposely to show you that there's a contrast. Uh, uh, on one hand, ye who were dead in your trespasses and sins, uh, you who walked according to the things of this world, no longer are walking according to the things of the world, but you're walking according to the word of God, the ways of God. And so we have one one hand and then we have the other hand. But then I began to think there's something in the middle. And that is our own will. We have a right to choose. It says in the book of Joshua, at the end of the chapter, Joshua says to the people, he said, choose you this day. Help me out. Choose you this day whom you will serve. 
If God is God, if Jehovah is God, if Jesus is Lord, then serve Jesus. But if Baal is God, then serve Baal. And so he gave us a choice. And so we are in the middle here. And what it is, it's my way. So we have God's way, the way of transgressors, or we have my way. Everybody say, my way. Today I'm going to talk to you about my way. Okay? And uh, I'll be showing you that in, by uh, illustration in the scripture in a few moments. Uh, but I wanted to show you that we have a choice of what we're going to do with our lives. You have a choice to be here today or not to be here today. Uh, some people chose to go on vacation, and that's fine. They need vacation. Maybe I need vacation. But anyway, uh, my, my vacation is coming over here and getting on the mower and riding for about four hours. That's my vacation, okay? I enjoy that. But anyway, uh, uh, choosing your day, and today I'm going to talk about my way. And uh, I began to think about it, and when I began to think about it, Yesterday, I was dealing with some other business, and Pastor Wilda came in and sat in my office, and she said, I want you to see this. And I almost threw her out of my office, because I'm trying to figure out my way, okay? But she showed me something on the Internet that was given by a man of God, and he was delusioned, uh, he was deceptive, uh, deceived by somebody, and he put on uh, there something I totally disagreed with, uh, and I looked down at the comments, and there was eight people on there saying, amen, 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 amen. We agree with you, we agree with you. And I didn't agree with it at all. So maybe I, I'm a little different. And uh, I disagreed with that, and this is a man of God. Don't get me wrong, okay? But he was deceived by what somebody told him. And we can easily be deceived and go my way. And I got to thinking about that, and I thought, how many of you know the old uh, thing from uh, Burger King? Have it my way. Yeah, have it my way. Well, on that thing, it said that if uh, somebody is trying to tell you you're not to have it your way, then you need to get out of there. It's a spirit of witchcraft. No, the, the spirit of witchcraft is a rebellion. Scripture says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. That's what the Bible says. And so I disagreed with it, and there's eight people there, and my wife kept coming and saying, you, you, you need to call. You need to straighten this man out. That's not my obligation. She said, you're a senior pastor. You need to straighten this out. If somebody in the church was doing something wrong, you would straighten them out. Yes, I would. And uh, if they need straightened out, listen, we don't do it my way. We do it God's way. We are not a Burger King religion. I said, we are not Burger King. If you want it your way, go down to Burger King and tell them you want it done your way. But we are not a Burger King religion. We are not a Burger King church. We follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. We do it God's way. And the Holy Spirit is here to teach us and lead us. I gave us that word there. That Bible right there is Dake's Bible. It's powerful. 40 years of stu he studied. I have another Bible with 16 translation. I have the uh, uh, Amplified Bible. I have the RSV Bible. I have all kind of Bibles. Uh, and I had them all out looking this up. Uh, we are doing it God's way, not man's way. And that's what's going with the politics right now in the United States. Uh, in uh, the Democratic Party, and I'm not a politician here, but the Democratic Party is all confused because they're all trying to do it their way. Everybody wants to do it their own way. Listen, in the church, you don't do it your own way. You do it God's way. And uh, so all these people agreed with this, and uh, they said... Uh, uh, Pastor Wilda kept coming in and saying, you need to call and you get this straightened out. And I said, I'm not calling that person because I'm not, that person is not under us. Uh, we have many ministers out there ministering in other areas, but his, he's not under us. Uh, and uh, he, he is a good man of God, don't get me wrong, but he was deluded. Delusionary, satanic thing came in and, and deluded. And uh, so uh, she kept pressing me and pressing me. Well, wouldn't you know then uh, this man comes on and is dancing on the video, and she had to show me that. Well, then I knew what was happening because the man that was dancing on the video is his apostle. 
And so uh, I said, give me the number because I don't use that phone. If I use my own phone, it doesn't work right and I throw it away anyway. But anyway, she got me the number and I called and I called the apostle and I said that I disagreed. And I said, now you're an apostle? And I said, I will not call that person because he's under you. And that's not my responsibility and that's not my place to do that. I do not call and tell somebody else, uh, you understand that they are wrong. Uh, I, I follow, there, there is a protocol in the house of God. I said, there's the protocol in the house of God. You don't do it your own way. I'm going to try to tell you that again. You don't do it your own way. Well, <clears throat> when I was debating about whether to do this or not, we, we were involved in getting, going from direct TV to dish TV and so forth and, and uh, all that. And the guy was there and, and he left and I went in to check. Uh, and so uh, I wanted to see if the Victory Channel was there because Pastor Wilder loves to watch on Monday and Tuesday and Thursday the Victory Channel. And uh, so I went in there to get the Victory Channel and I hit the one just before it. And, and, and it was a Christian station. And there was a black lady on there, and she said, and I'll tell you right now, I'm going to have it my way. Oh, holy jumpings. I'm debating whether to send this, uh, call this person or not. And this lady says, I'm going to tell you right now, and, and this was a Christian, are you hearing me? This was in the church, and she said, and I'm going to have it done my way. Uh-huh, my way. Everybody say, my way is not the right way. It's God's way. But I flipped the channel, I, I just heard that and flipped the channel up the Victory Channel and the man was on there and he had the Bible out and he was reading out of the book of Acts and he said the Holy Spirit will guide us into God's way. You look at me and you say, Pastor, does that really happen to you? Yeah, it happens to me. Because when I was debating and thinking, and she kept saying, you need to call, you need to call. I said, I'm not calling. It's not my responsibility. If those eight people want to believe that, then let them believe it. She said, you need to straighten it out because you're a man of God and you're a senior pastor and you need to straighten it out. And so I went and got the phone call and I told the person I was talking with, and uh, it was Apostle John. And when I told uh, Apostle John, he picked the phone up right away. Pastor Ken. What's going on? <laughs> what, what, what's happening? And I told him, and I said, you're the apostle. I said, I'm released. I called you. And I said, but uh, I disagree. I said, I don't care if eight people agreed with that and said amen. I don't care if you agree that you want it your own way. In this house, you're not getting it your own way. You're going to do it God's way. I said, in this house, maybe they didn't pay any attention over there. I said, in this house, whether you agree with me or not, you're not going to get it your own way. You know what little kids do, little, little babies, when they don't get their own way? They have what they call a temper tantrum. And what do we do as parents, what we used to do as parents? We used to turn them over our knee and give them a smack on the butt. and said, so that'll be enough of that. I've been in some stores where the little kids, three and four year olds, tell the parents uh, uh, what they're going to do. That, that isn't the way it uh, should operate, uh, and it's not going to operate that way in the church. Uh, if I have to, I'll turn you over my knee and uh, give you a... Never mind. If you're going to throw a temper tantrum because you want it your own way, you're not going to... If you're in this house and you say, well, I want it done my way, you're in the wrong house. We're going to do it God's way. We're going to hear what God says. We're going to follow the revelation of the word of God. And we're going to do it God's way. Somebody say God's way. See that? If nobody else agrees, Ricky agrees. God's way. I want you to hear that. <laughs> Out of the overflow comes God's way. So when I began to look at this and, and, and uh, people listen. Everything's not going to be done your way here. And there is a discipline in the house of God and the leadership of the house of God. And the, this person was saying that the leadership is, is not giving you your, your way, you need to get out of there. No, that's rebellion. That's the sin of witchcraft. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? So I'm bringing that right out, and I know this is going to be on the Internet tonight, and the people are going to be call, call, calling, and, and they're going to be disagreeing with me. It doesn't matter because I don't pay attention to the Internet anyway. You understand? 
I am bringing a powerful word here. There is the way of transgressors, and when we give our hearts to Jesus Christ, we then walk in the spirit and walk by the power of God. We walk in love. We walk in the light of his uh, word. We walk uh, in, the, in the presence of Jesus Christ. And so there is a walking in that. And I'm going to give you an illustration out of the book, uh, uh, out of the word of God, so you don't think I'm just uh, pulling this out of somewhere. Uh, I get confirmations, by the way, because when I don't know what to do, God does it over the TV of all things. Brand new TV, brand brand new dish, you know. I flipped that station, never saw that station before. Probably never turned on it again because she said, I want it my way. And she was the pastor of the church. I want it done my way. And uh, I thought, lady, don't come to my church because I'll preach against that. It's not done your way. So go ahead and throw your temper tantrum. It's done God's way. Well, I'll give you an illustration. Over in the book of Acts chapter 8 and verse 1. Acts 8 and 1. And put it in the Amplified, please. And it says there that Saul was consenting unto the stoning of Stephen. Saul was consenting to Stephen's death. It pleased and entirely approving. And on that day, a great severe persecution broke out against the church. It was in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the region of Judah, Samaria. And uh, Saul was there and he was doing it his way. I said he was doing it his way. Now we go over to chapter 9 and verse 1. And in chapter 9 and verse 1, and uh, we're reading, and let's put it in the King James, please. Uh, and Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples. And Saul yet, that means he has been doing this for a while. You hear? Sometimes when people give problems in the church, uh, it doesn't mean that it just happened. It means that they've been doing it for a while. And when they go so far, one person one time said that pastor will let you go until you're about ready to hang yourself and then he'll pull the rope. I'll let you go and let you go and let you go and see if the Holy Spirit will straighten you out. But if he doesn't work on it, then the Holy Spirit will allow me to straighten. And then Saul breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. He went on to the high priest. He's doing it his way. He's very zealous. Uh, he's, uh, he, he consented for Stephen's death, uh, and, and he was causing havoc in the church. And now he is still breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. He went to the high priest, verse 2, please, uh, and uh, desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any on the way, say, on this way, now, I want to explain something. When the early church was formed and Jesus Christ uh, began the early church with the disciples and so forth, it was not called, it was, you were not called Christians until Antioch. Up until that point, it was called the way. Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so they used that. Jesus said, I am the way. And so these disciples and uh, Stephen and all these people up until the point of Antioch where they were called Christians, uh, they were called in the way. Now they were in the way of their religion. They were in the way uh, of uh, their natural things, what they wanted to do. They were in the way and Paul was, Saul was going to find them and he now has letters uh, he is very zealous for what he's doing. He went to the high priest, got the uh, authority and, and got the paperwork. And he's going to find if any of these people that are in the way. I hope some of you are in the way this morning. Not your way, but God's way. I hope you get in the way of some of these politicians. I hope you get in the way of abortion. I hope you get in the way, I'm going to try it again. I hope you get in the way of abortion. Abortion is a my way. It's my body. I'll do with my body what I want to do with my body. And there's no question, but the word of God said, it's an abomination unto the Lord. Some of you need to get in the way of uh, transvestience uh, and uh, all those people I can't pronounce. Some of you need to get in the way of that. Some of you need to look and see that transvestients and, 
and uh, gay and what, what is it? Uh, lesbians. They are an abomination unto the Lord. And yet they say, it's my body and uh, I'm in a man's body, but I think I'm a girl. Okay. Then I talk like a girl, act like a girl. No. That's your way. And your way is the wrong way. And actually it's a transgression because God said it's an abomination. He said, if it doesn't straighten up, I'm going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh huh. And if this nation doesn't straighten up, God's going to have to apologize for Sodom and Gomorrah because when God put you in this natural body and you created a man, you're a man. You're a boy or a girl. You're not in anything in between. And if you're in one body, you need to look at your body and say, what am I? See? Well, I don't want to be a girl. I want to be a boy. Sound like a temper tantrum to me. Amen. Amen. And so I say some of you, boy, you guys are getting quiet this morning. You must think I'm going to get in trouble. Um, maybe we won't put that on the Internet. No, we're going to put it on the Internet because it's the word of God. We need to have the way of the Lord. And the way of the Lord is right. The way of the Lord is justice. The way of the Lord is salvation. The way of the Lord is deliverance. The way of the Lord is healing. The way of the Lord. And I'm going to walk in the things of God. I'm going to walk in the counsels and the precepts of the Lord. I'm going to walk in righteousness. I'm going to walk and I'm going to believe. And I'm not going to put up with my way. You don't get it your way. When I was a little kid and I wanted to do it my way, my mama told me, you do it my way, not your way. And uh, God is telling us, uh, there is a way, walk ye in it. Uh, there is a way of the wise and there is a way of the foolish. Uh, which do you choose today? Uh, and we're going to have to choose. Uh, some of these young people uh, don't know what to choose. Uh, but I'm telling you what, the, some of the young people are getting smarter than some of us because we just let it happen. And it's about time we take a, authority and say there is a way to walk, and we need to walk in that. Uh, uh, you know, I quote it all the time, uh, Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, in the way of the Lord. And we need to delight, we need to ponder, uh, salah. We need to ponder, uh, we need to think about it. Uh, we need to ponder on, what, on the word of God. If the word of God says by his stripes I'm healed, then somebody ought to get a healing. If it says by his uh, uh, atonement uh, I, I am saved, then somebody ought to give their heart to Jesus Christ. Somebody ought to get saved. Uh, somebody ought to get filled with the Holy Spirit. It's a gift from God, amen? And so as I'm looking at this and I'm saying, Lord, what are you saying to us? So Saul starts off and he gets these letters and he's doing it his own way. He's very zealous. He's a very educated man. He sat at the feet of Gamil. He's a Hebrew of Hebrews. He's also a, a, a free Greek. He, you know, you can't come against him. He had all these pleasant things happening to him, but he wanted it his own way. And so he's on the road, the road to Damascus, and as he's traveling the road, and I'm going to go down through the scripture quickly, uh, as he's traveling the road to Damascus, uh, and uh, he's going along with an entourage, uh, and as he's going with his entourage to get his own way, he's going to, to Jerusalem uh, to take those who were in the way and take them out of the way and put them in prison. Are you hearing that? He's going to put them in prison. He's going to bind them. Some of them, they're going to be killed. Some of them are going to be imprisoned. And he's going with a purpose. He's going in zealousness. He's going with all of his education. He's going, he was a Jew of Jews. He, he sat at the feet of Gamil, I mentioned. He's a well-educated person. And here he goes with an entourage with his own way in line. Something happened. Suddenly, there was a light that shone out of the heavens and he fell to the ground. Fell to the ground means that it's no longer Saul, no longer pride, no longer arrogancy, no longer the Pharisee of Pharisees, 
no longer the one who is well educated. He is now on his knees and the light blinded him. He had an encounter with Jesus Christ. And Jesus said to him, and the, the people standing around didn't see anyone. They didn't see anything, but they heard the voice. And he said, Saul, Saul, why kickest thou against the pricks? Here's a man that is going with the authority of religion, going to take those who are in the way and put them in prison. He slaughtered them and uh, caused havoc among them. And that's what he was going to do. Going with his authority from the religious of that day. Take him back to Jerusalem. But he had an encounter with Jesus Christ. What I'm saying is we need another encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to know that he is our Lord. He is our Savior. We need to know that as we get ready, as Saul was getting ready to go and take care of them, he recognized something happened to him. He fell down on his knees and he was blinded. How many of you know, just off the course of the word of God, just for a few moments, how many of you know that the former president, Donald Trump, knew something happened to him the other day? How many of you know, you don't have to agree with me, but uh, how many of you know that there was an encounter because he was looking at the crowd and he turned just, just that much to look at the chart and the bullet whizzed past it and took his ear. How many of you know that he recognized that, that he had an encounter? Whether the change is going to come or not, we'll see. I said last Wednesday night, I said... Uh, one thing about it, that he has a good policies, but he has a bad mouth. He needs to get, needs to get his mouth straightened out. So I was watching the, the thing with uh, Franklin Graham. No, in fact, it was uh, Donald Trump himself said, uh, uh, Franklin Graham sent him a note and said, I like your stories and I like your jokes, but watch your mouth and, and change, uh, change your tune. That was on Wednesday, and this was on just the other day. You, you understand? Sometimes you're saying things you don't even know what you're saying. Okay? I said he needs to get his mouth straightened out, and, and Franklin Graham sent him a note and said, straighten out your mouth. Okay? Get your policy straight. How many of you know he had an encounter? You, you don't have to agree with him, but he had an encounter. You don't have to agree with Saul either, but he had an encounter, and something is changing now. There he is, humbled, on his knees, no longer the arrogant the Pharisee of Pharisees, no longer the one who sat at the feet of Gamil, no, no longer the one who had his freedom. And, and uh, his father was a Greek, and so he was, uh, he, he was free. He had freedom. He had everything he wanted. Uh, no longer. Now he is on his knees before the Lord Jesus Christ. And I wanted you to see something by the Scripture. And if you're going down through the Scriptures, uh, you'll see uh, he said, he responded, and he said, Lord... What do I have to do with you? Lord, what do you want? He recognized right away that it was not a just a, a happenstance. It was an encounter. Some of you are going to have to recognize in this last day, you're going to have to have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to have to have an encounter because the way the world is going, the way the United States is going, the way the politicians are going, you're going to have to have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Oh, you got quiet. You got quiet. You don't know what I'm preaching, do you? I'm preaching, I'm preaching right down where you live now. I'm telling you that it's enough of this uh, uh, crying and bawling around and uh, I, I don't like what you're doing, so I'm going to another church. I don't like what you're doing. Where, where is our commitment? I don't like what you're doing. I don't like what you say. Uh, uh, I... Uh, if we're preaching the word of God, you better like what we're saying. I can remember that one couple came to our house when I, right after I started pastoring and started ministering. And, and uh, I've always been a word person, preaching the word of God. And they, they came right to our house and sat down on the couch. And they said, we disagree with you. You sat on, on Sunday. And I said, what did I say? And they told me. 
And I said, I didn't really say that. I quoted the word of God. Oh. Oh. Oh, that makes a difference. Do you understand? It is the will of God, not your will. Jesus himself said, not my will, but thine be done. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Father, if it be possible, take this cup from me. Father, if it be possible, let me do what I want to do. And uh, Father says, it's not possible. You're paying the penalty for all these people that are here today and all those people on the Internet. And uh, so there is Saul, and he's on his knees, and he's blinded. And now he was leading the entourage. You got that? But now they have to take him by the hand and lead him into Damascus. Do you see the humility? And he went into Damascus, and he was there for three days. And as he was three days there, uh, uh, he did not eat. He went into a fast, uh, and he knew that he had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he is being changed. Uh, his name is no longer going to be Saul. It's going to be Paul, the great apostle. Uh, and uh, things are happening to him. But on the other side of town, on the other side of Damascus, now he's in Damascus, and he goes into Damascus. Uh, he doesn't go in there now with all of his authority and with all of his papers. Uh, he goes in there in humility. Uh, he goes in there and begins to pray to our Father for his divine will to be done in his life. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? Uh, it, it was a change that took place when you have an encounter with the Messiah, when you have a, an encounter with Jesus Christ. Uh, it will change the, the way you are. If you don't believe that, uh, you just look at this pastor. I was a humble, quiet, mealy mouse school teacher for 17 years. I would not even, uh, I, I would not even go and people asked me to go. Uh, uh, they asked me for the uh, church of, not the church, the Nazarene church, some church anyway, Irvin McGarvey, asked me if I would speak to the young people. I said, I don't speak out. I don't talk to people. Now, for 43 years, I've been preaching the Word of God. And I keep preaching the Word of God because it's the Word of God and it's the will of God. For the Word of God is the will of God and the will of God is the Word of God. And this is the will of God in Christ Jesus, that you grieve not the power of the Holy Spirit who's leading you and guiding you into all truth. And He wants us to know His will and not your will doesn't matter. we got to give up Jesus Himself said three times he prayed and said, Nevertheless, Father, not my will, but thine be done. Can you say that out loud? Not my will. I don't hear you. Not my will, but thine be done. I want God's way, not my way. Not the way of transgression. I left transgression. I left those things uh, of the past. I left the sins of the past. Uh, and uh, now I'm in my way and I have a choice. I can go back uh, to the idols of this world or I can follow Jesus Christ. Uh, I have decided uh, I'm going to follow Jesus. Uh, the cross before me and the world behind me. And the other night when uh, uh, a powerful word came, that, that's the most powerful word I've ever heard uh, the, the uh, Avanza uh, speak, uh, uh, that was a powerful word about faith and fear. And fear goes before me, or fear is behind me, faith goes before me. Somebody say, I'm walking in faith. I'm walking in faith. Don't you believe that? You're sitting in this house, uh, and uh, I, I mention this all the time. You're sitting in this beautiful facility that God has given us out in the country, and you know that we did all this by faith. There is no way that we can pay over a million dollars and pay everything off in this place and pay the gym off and pay the bus off and pay the van off and pay, fix up the pavilion and pay the pavilion off. And it's, everything is paid off. Everything is paid off. And, and, and you look at me, that's because of faith. That's because of faith, not fear. Because they would tell me, you're going overboard. You're going overboard. I said, well, if I'm going overboard, I'm going to do like Peter. I'm going to walk on some water. Somebody say hallelujah. So we see then that on the other side of town, on the other side of Damascus, there was another vision taking place. And the man's name, and he was a man of God, and he was praying. 
And his name was Ananias. And so Ananias is over and Saul is on the other side of town and he's praying. And now over here on the other side of Damascus is another man and his name is Ananias and he's praying before the Lord and the Lord gives him a vision. And he shows him Paul or Saul. And he shows him praying and he shows what happened to him. And he said, Ananias, I want you to leave here because you're praying. I want you to leave here and I want you to go over and anoint him. Ananias said, well, Lord, I've heard about this guy. He came here to Damascus with authority from the, from the uh, Jerusalem church, from the religious people, from the Sanhedrin, and he has papers to put us in prison. And you want me to go over and pray with that guy? I'm not going over and pray with that guy. God said, I want you to go over and pray for that guy. I want you to go over and pray for that guy. Some of you are not getting it. God's going to call you to pray for somebody that you didn't think you were going to pray for. Going to call you to pray for somebody that you thought wasn't worthy. Somebody that you've been afraid of. He's going to call you and he's going to say, I'm going to tell you that you're going to pray for that person. See, Dan, I didn't know I was going to pray for you this morning. But I'm up there. And all of a sudden that came to me about my brother being healed five years ago. He only had three months. You only had one month, you said, and you're going to leave here this week and, and go and prepare and have hospice and everything all set up for you. And uh, he had all that ready for him too, you know. And uh, something happened. Now he doesn't have hospice. He doesn't have a gynecologist. He doesn't have, all he has uh, is the will of God. And he gave his heart to Jesus Christ. Somebody say hallelujah. Don't tell me miracles can't happen. Don't tell me miracles can't happen. If miracles can happen to one person, they can happen. God is no respecter of persons. And here is a man who was consenting unto Stephen's death. He was causing havoc in the church. He had authority. He had pride. He had arrogancy. He was leaving in, leading an entourage and finally had to be picked up off of the ground and led blinded into Damascus. And now over here is another man who's a man of God. We never hear of Ananias up to this point. All we know is that he was praying before God and God shows him a vision and shows him Paul. And Ananias spoke out and said, oh, I'm going to pray for that guy. Maybe you've said that, but I'm going to pray for anybody that tell, he tells me to because something's going to happen. And finally, Ananias said, okay, I'm going over. And see, so he goes over to the other side of town he goes in, and here is the one who came to persecute him, the one who went to put him in prison, the one who maybe would want to put him to death because he was a man of God. He was in the way. Ananias was in the way. But somebody else is getting in the way now. And he walks over to him, and he said, Paul, you dirty rat, you. No, that isn't what the Scripture says. You know what he said? He said, Brother Saul. Brother Saul, what? Brother Saul, that man came with a purpose, but his purpose is changed. My way isn't going to do it. God's way is going to do it. And he had an encounter with Jesus Christ. And he said, Brother Saul, the Lord showed me in the vision what happened to you, and I'm coming over here. I'm going to lay hands on you and your blinded eyes are going to be healed. And not only that, you're going to receive a gift of the Holy Spirit because now you're going to follow God's will and God's way. I'm going to tell you here today, you're here today, and I'm telling you that God is moving by and he is intervening into your circumstance and your situation. And he's not only intervening, but he's going to change what you thought was your way. He's going to take out your way, your will, your determination, and your purpose. And he's going to give you a new purpose and a new life. And you're going to walk in the Spirit of God. Walking after the things. Oh, blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, 
nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But there's a change comes, and his delight is in the law of the Lord, in the word of the Lord, in the way of the Lord. We sing that out of Psalm 25, verse 2. Teach me thy way, thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy way, thy ways, O Lord, O my God. I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. What are you preaching, Pastor? I'm preaching the Word of God. I'm preaching about a, a man called Ananias who didn't want to do God's will, but he was in God's will, and God showed him a vision, and he had the vision, and so he went to the man that he hated. He went to the man that he didn't like. And when he got there, things changed because he didn't say, hateful Paul, uh, Saul, you rascal you. He said, brother Saul. I want you to catch that in the scripture. Is that up there somewhere? I don't know what verse it's in, but it's in there. Uh, brother Saul. There it is, brother Saul. The Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way and you came as he sent me that you might as receive thy sight. So you might receive your sight. So guess what? I'm going to lay hands on you and you're going to get your sight. Not because I said so, not because Ananias said so, but because the Lord said, I'm sending you over there. You're going to touch him and his sight is going to come back. And not only that, he's going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody say hallelujah. Is that the word of God or not? Is that the word of God? Give a hand clap to the word of God. He said, you're going to be healed. He said, I, I, I'm coming over. I'm just going to lay hands because that's what the Holy Spirit told me. I had a vision. I knew what happened to you. I knew you were coming with these papers. I knew you were coming with authority. Everybody, every Christian, everybody that was in the way knew that he was coming. And they knew to hide away from him. But God took Ananias and said, come on out of hiding, Ananias. He's telling you and I, get out of your hiding place. Get ready because you're going to anoint others. Others, uh, you're going to touch others uh, that you thought would never make it. Uh, you're going to see a change take place. Uh, if God can change a soul, a killer, uh, a, a, a person that was causing havoc, uh, a person that was kissing, uh, kicking against the pricks, uh, if he can take him and change him into one of the greatest apostles, uh, surely he can change you and I. Surely he can change you and I. If he can change uh, that man who was going to kill the uh, uh, those who were in the way, uh, he was going to cause havoc in the church. And he changed him and he goes and builds up the church. Surely we're having a change take place. So going back to my little thing that I've been working on, I was working two days and saying, Lord, I, I'd go to my Bible and I'd read and I, I had the strong concordance. I went down through the way. Do you know there, there's 200 and sometimes the way is used in the scripture? I read every one of them down through Strong's. I read the dictionary on the way. I read all kinds of things. I'm saying, Lord, what are you trying to show me? He said, it's not the, the way of transgressors. It's not the way they want it. It's my will and my way. And if they will follow my will and my way, I will have the Holy Spirit lead them into the greater things and get ready for the greater things. Wealth belongs unto the people of God. Somebody ought to be getting some wealth around here. Healing. Well, okay, Pastor, that's all right. Healing belongs to the people of God. Somebody ought to get a healing. Salvation belongs to the people of God. It's one of the things, uh, well, the way of God is the way of salvation. Uh, somebody say, the way of salvation is coming. Souls are being saved. People are being healed. Miracles are happening. God is going to confirm his word with signs. Hebrews chapter uh, 2 and verse 4. Uh, God, God is going to confirm his word with signs, wonders, miracles, and gifts of the Holy Spirit. Say gifts of the Holy Spirit are coming this way. Say signs, wonders, and miracles are coming my way. Gifts of the Holy Spirit. Say healing. Say salvation. Say power. Anointing. Glory. Glory. 
more glory. That's it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They, they tell me that, uh, Daryl told me one time that, that they took me off the internet on one of the things I was preaching because I said the wrong thing. You know what I probably said? I probably said you need to change your way. And they didn't like that. How many of you know they're changing their way? How many know that they're changing Facebook? How many know that Elon Musk is going to give uh, on, on Donald Trump $4 million a month? Some of you need to watch the news once in a while. Four million dollars a month. So if we had four million dollars, we'd pay this place off. You can't pay it off. It's already paid off. Sorry. <laughs> Somebody told me one time, oh, something's going to happen to me and I'm going to get all this money and you'll never have to worry about the, the uh, uh, $1,146 a monthly payment anymore. You won't have to worry about payments anymore because I'll pay the church off. And uh, right after that, the, the whole family left, uh, left the church and uh, we paid it off anyhow. We didn't pay it off. God paid it off. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Say, it's not my way. Say it out loud. It's not my way. It's God's way. And <laughs> Rick, Rick's preaching today. You better, he's going to be worn out this afternoon. He'll sleep all afternoon. Now, somebody say it's God's way. Somebody say God's way. I showed you that because he was healed and he became the great apostle and he remained in Damascus and all the disciples were afraid of him. But he would go right into their meetings. He was bold now because he had an encounter with Jesus Christ. We need a fresh encounter with Jesus Christ. And... Uh, you say, Pastor, this is pretty strong what you're going to say. I know. You need to quit your bawling and, and uh, murmuring and complaining about everything. When God shows me to do something, we're going to do it. God showed me we're going to build this building, and everybody in the nation, was, in the area, was coming against it. Even people outside of the church, even the men down at the restaurant, they were meeting together, a bunch of men, and they said, my, we really like all those lights up there on that lighthouse. Uh, I have a question. And I said, what's the question? That was about a couple years ago. And they said, what? I said, what's the question? And they said, how are you going to pay for it? I said, I'm not. When you, when you get an a, a electric bill of $990 last month or two months ago, because we're using the heaters now, okay, uh, and then... And then this month, I just paid the bill again, and it was $300. So, Harry, turn the air conditioners off. Let them sweat a little bit. <laughs> Somebody say, God has sent me. God has sent me. I don't hear you. God has sent me. And somebody is going to receive their sight. Somebody is going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody is going to get healed. In the book of Acts, the phrase, the, the way was a scornful labor, label for the early Christians. Like in Antioch, it was Christians. Uh, they called them Christians. Uh, and you say, I'm a Christian. Do you know that was a derogatory thing? If people didn't like you, they could, said you were a Christian. If they didn't like them. But the way is a term also used throughout the book of Acts to designate uh, all believers in Jesus Christ. Uh, Saul was on that way. He was zealous doing it in his own, own way. He had a personal encounter with Jesus. And, and I started putting on the back, uh, the way of the Lord. The way of the Lord leads to new life. Uh, the way of the Lord is salvation. The way of the Lord is truth. Uh, the way of the Lord is righteousness. The way of the Lord is wisdom. The way of the Lord is understanding. Uh, the way of the Lord is peace. The way of the Lord is holiness. Uh, the way of the Lord is the spirit. Uh, it is the way of the wise because there is also the way of the fools. Uh, it is the way of life. There's also death. Uh, it's a way of heaven, but there's also a hell. It's a way of the humble, but it's also the way of the pride. So God's way, God's will. And I put down and down the bottom, and I had this blank for quite a while down the bottom. I thought it says God's will, my own way, and the way of transgressors. And then I started looking up. The transgressors are the way of Cain, the way of Balaam, the way of hell, the way of a fool, the way of death, the way of heresy. 
But on the other side, I have the way to new life. I have the way of peace. And I saw the Lord on the way. That's what uh, he said. I have Hebrews 10, 20, a new and living way. And then in the book of Isaiah, the Lord said, my ways. Listen to this now. Some of you aren't going to like this. Lord said, my ways are higher than your ways. My ways are better than what you think. My ways are higher than your ways. You say, yeah, but my way is pretty good. No, it isn't. It's a fallacy. You need to get rid of your way. Well, if I don't get it my way, I'm going to leave. That's a temper tantrum. You need smacked up. That's all. You need to get turned over somebody's knee. Somebody say, it's not my way. If Jesus himself said, not my will, thine be done, pray Jesus. He said, not my will, thy will be done. Everybody, if you can get a hold of this, and in an honest proclamation, say, it's not my will. Say it out loud. Not my will, but thine be done. In the name of Jesus, I give it to you, Lord. We all have our thoughts. And, and, and I'm a person of reason. I, I like to reason things out. I like to think things out. And just about the time I get the thought out, Janet, you know what? He changes it. Yeah. He changes it around. And just about the time I think I know what I'm doing, I find out I have no idea what I'm doing. Are you here? 43 years of pastoring. Pastor, you ought to know that word pretty good. Just about the time I think I know it, he comes in with another revelation. God is doing great and mighty things. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say not my will, but thine be done. Jesus prayed it, I can pray it. If Jesus can say not my will, Thine be done. Father, is not my will, but your will be done in heaven. Hallelujah. I believe that we need to just stand and say the Lord's Prayer together and from the heart. Not just quote it. Just say it. Okay? And don't quote it behind me. Quote it with me. Are you ready? On three. One, two, three. Our Father, who art in heaven... Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Here's God's will. It was written in 1972 by the Gaithers. And uh, I don't know how I remember that. But anyway, uh, it says God sent his son. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That if you just believe in him, you will not perish, but have everlasting life. And I like John 3:17. It says he didn't come into this world to condemn you, but that the world through him might be saved. Somebody say, I'm saved. I'm saved. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, we invite you to watch a new service every Sunday evening at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Watching on Facebook, please click the like button and leave a positive comment. And please share with others. YouTube watchers, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Help spread the good news of Jesus Christ.